Hi everybody, Paul here. If you have a single handle faucet that's leaking from the spout when it's turned off or leaking from anywhere around the base of the handle when the faucet is turned off or even when it's turned on, then the washers and springs need to be replaced. This is something that's really easy to do. This happens to be a Delta faucet, but what I'm going to show you will apply to any single handle faucet. The first thing you'll need to do is turn the hot and cold water valves off. These will typically be located below the faucet, which is typically inside your cabinet. Mine happen to be located right here. Just turn them both clockwise to turn them off. If you don't have any hot and cold water shutoff valves located below the faucet, then you'll have to locate the main water supply shutoff valve. Your main water supply shutoff valve may look similar to this, which has a quarter turn handle. Turn the handle clockwise, which will stop at a quarter turn. Or your main water supply shutoff valve may look similar to this. Turn the handle clockwise until it stops. Once you have the water shut off, open the faucet to relieve any pressure. Next, close the drain if you have a drain stopper. I also like to put a towel over the drain just for extra insurance so there's no way any parts will accidentally end up going down the drain. First you'll need to remove the handle which usually involves having to loosen just one screw. Mine happens to be located right here which takes a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Just turn it counterclockwise. Next you'll need to remove this collar turning it counterclockwise using an adjustable wrench. Don't use a wrench that has teeth on it or you may put teeth marks on the collar or scratch up the metal surface. Next we'll remove this plastic collar. Next we'll remove this rubber collar. Now you can remove the ball assembly. This is where the washers and springs are for the hot and cold water. I find the easiest way to remove these washers is just to move back and forth on the inside of the washer with a little screwdriver and lift it out. And as you can see, there's the spring with it. Notice that one end of the spring is smaller than the other end. So make sure when you put the new spring into the new washer that you put the small end in first to the washer. And here's my new washer and spring kit. The other thing I like to do before I put everything back together is I like to dip a Q-tip in apple cider vinegar and clean all the surfaces. I also do this to the ball valve as well. I find it easiest to just put the little spring on a little screwdriver, again, with the little end up, and then just guide it in. Notice the difference in the end of the washer. This end will remain up. The other thing I like to do is first wet the washer, and then slide it onto a little screwdriver, and then guide it into place. Next, gently seat the washer by pushing it in with your finger. Once it's seated properly, you'll feel the washer spring up and down. So now that our springs and washers are installed, we'll reinstall our ball valve. Notice the slot in the ball valve. Make sure this slot engages with this part sticking out of the side here. Next, install the rubber collar back in. Next, we'll reinstall our plastic collar. Make sure this area, which sticks out on the edge of the collar, is lined up with the slot here. Next, gently reinstall the metal collar, being careful not to cross-thread it, and snug it down with your wrench. Be careful not to over-tighten it. And last, line up the inside hole on the handle with the ball valve rod and fasten it back down. 
I hope you found this helpful. And if you like this video, please hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and please be sure to subscribe. God bless you and have a great day. Bye for now.